You want to solo for the fortune. That's good. Generally, I won't want to attempt this unless losing is highly expected. As the problem here is not the fort. With constant sword spamming and gunning, it does not matter how many times. You die. As long as your ship is afloat, you're gonna finish it. And eventually get it done. The problem here is... The other side of the fort. Thieves watching your progress from a distance. Like hiding barrels in towers and tuckers in your grandma's basement. This does not mean you can't minimize these encounters, as that also depends on when you choose to complete it. So we have to optimize two factors. When we do the fort and how long it takes. I will show you the right time to complete it and the best strategies to take down the waves as fast as possible. All done during this live guide on my stream. And this guide is the viewer's request. If you have any requests, visit me on Twitch. Fuzzy here, bringing you honest guides and gameplays. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Soloing Fort of Fortune is a great challenge. If you get it done, it will be an excellent practice for you. It helps you stay alert by noticing mermaids, understanding hiding spots on your sloop, and basically the ability to deal with enemies while taking down the waves. So even if you lose your progress, try and capture that footage, watch it again and realize what you have done wrong. This means you are now a step better. That's one mistake you will avoid next time. Now we have two factors, the when and the how. When. The only time a thief does not steal your stuff is when they are either sleeping or having a life away from the computer. How to know these times? By monitoring player activity. Visit steamdb.info. Even if you are on an Xbox, it does not matter, as this is also a general reflection of when people set sail. The higher the graph, the more people on the servers. For example, here it shows that 7am UTC is usually the lowest activity. In my time, that's 10am and weekdays are quieter than weekends. So assuming I want to attempt solo at the lowest player activity, my mornings are the best times. This does not mean the server will be empty. You still might get the sweatiest and busiest server. It's just a helping factor that could minimize thievery while you complete the fort. The more you succeed, choose higher times to increase the difficulty and test your strength. Consider it a self-training program with linear progression. Once the when is chosen, you will need to hop into a server with Fort of Fortune active. If there is someone already there, you are not soloing anymore. You just have to become the thief, which is for another video. Upon approaching the fort and making sure you park in the right spot, keep an eye for distant ships behind rocks or mermaids around the fort. Each fort has a better place to park your ship. Usually, close to towers is the best. If no cannons are pointing at you from the island, you are safe. But make sure to get rid of kegs on these towers so no players would use that against you. Check barrels on top of towers and areas where skeletons cannot reach. Also, scout the shores of the island to see if any rowboats are around, especially rowboats facing the island. Sometimes the best way to counter tuckers is to pretend they are not there until the last moment, as if you kill them early, they will come back, but if you beat them just before completing, you might have time to get away with all the loot before they get back. Now that we managed the when and found our fort, towers are cleared and you are ready to go. If a ship approaches, skeletons at the towers will launch at them. Keep an eye for empty towers that do not respawn. This means someone is there killing the skeletons repeatedly every time they spawn so they can hide. In my situation, this server was completely empty. But it was just a coincidence, as I even had the reaper flag on and still no one came. Before starting, the number one item needed in a fort is a firebomb. So make sure you stock up a lot of this, around at least like 30 before you get there. Better than a blunderbuss or double gunning. If done right, you literally just need one firebomb per skeleton wave by following a strategy I call the skeleton blender. I just made that up and I love it. Allow me to explain. The trick about fire is that it's contagious, from one skeleton to another. What you have to perform here is entirely the opposite of social distancing. Keep running in a circle until you see them all in a tiny group. Not very fast and make sure you have a large radius, as if you get closer to them from the other side, they will turn the other way, scattering them around, which is not what we want, so make sure you create them as a trail for your path. Once stacked, regardless of skeleton type, one firebomb will keep going back and forth between all skeletons until they die. 
including the skeleton captains with red name tags. In the case of shadow skeletons, maybe you want to wait until daytime to try and perform the same strategy. The only issue with shadow skeletons is that they mostly spawn with pistols, quickly taking you down if you're in the line of sight. But it does not hurt to attempt the same strategy, set them on fire, then use your lantern to activate them. Some of the skeleton orders that drop later might give you an ashen skull or firebound crate. These will help you speed up the process significantly and refresh your supplies of firebombs. If skeletons spawn with kegs, make sure you gather them all together and use a throwable or your gun to blow it up, setting all others on fire. This process speeds up the fort significantly, all the way until you reach the skeleton lords. Now, for skeleton lords, there are multiple things you can do. Depending on the fort, it's all about pathfinding. If you manage to stand in an area where both cannot reach you, like top of a rock or somewhere, set fire to one of them before it stands next to the other. Then as soon as it follows, this will keep the fire going back and forth endlessly between both. But this is not as fast and takes long. The best way is the usual way. Lower them to the shore and cannon them until they die. All skeleton lords should take less than 10 minutes. Even the ashen lord could be killed before his storm. While completing the fort, keep checking the horizon every 2 to 3 skeleton waves. And by reaching the last lords, recheck towers, mermaids and rowboats. Also make sure to check behind rocks as that's where ships usually park. Now you have the key for the vault. This key is visible on the map, so as soon as it spawns, make sure you immediately use it to open the vault. In my situation, we got server merged, so the vault was already opened. But in a normal case, this will protect you from any ship that logs into the server after the fort is complete as there is not any clue that a fort of fortune was there. The longer the key stays on the map, the higher chance someone will find you. So use it as soon as it spawns. Now you are in a high risk and high reward situation. Tuckers or ships always use these kegs to their advantage. I usually blow them all up and after that I recheck that my ship didn't take any damage. As sometimes if it's parked close, this significant explosion could affect it. So take these kegs at your own risk. Now, if you want to take the kegs, stack them to the side of the vault. Take everything out and harpoon it to your ship from one location. Once done, do not harpoon the mega kegs as sometimes they blow up and recheck the horizon before putting them on your crow's nest. Now that you have the treasure, never sell at the nearest outpost. Always go to an unexpected one that is further to avoid any players hiding at the outpost. And if you have kegs, make sure you do not go through the storm. I'm always lazy to sell, so I invited my friend to sell with me as he needed the loot. But Fort of Fortune was soloed without any issues. If my content is useful to you, please consider subscribing. And while you're at it, allow me to make a small announcement. You will see other videos I uploaded to my channel, like Subnautica and soon New World. I always get comments like, please do Sea of Thieves, or are you quitting Sea of Thieves every time I upload another game. Now that is great that you guys enjoy my Sea of Thieves content the most, and I'm very grateful. But keep in mind, if I upload other content, it does not mean less Sea of Thieves in any way. It is the lifeline of my channel and will always be. It just means that I want to share some of my other adventures with you and hopefully make guides about other games too. Thank you for using my channel, Fuzzy here, have a good one.